for number three. Oh, oh she's gonna get into him. She dumps him. A huge championship shakeup storms the NASCAR Can-Am Pro Series West Tour after yet another intense battle at the finish. This time involving teammates who weren't afraid to rough fenders if it meant to get by their competitor. This was the case with all three Bill McAnally racing drivers, even Sunrise 4 took a part of the mix as the infamous last lap dump and run by Haley Deegan has caused tremendous implications. Find out how everything boiled out in the Napa Auto Parts Colorado 150 on this episode of West Coast Wednesday. And it starts right now. Alrighty, episode number 11 of West Coast Wednesday. I know you've been waiting for it. For those who actually do watch or even listen, here we go. Let's not waste time. Let's go to the highlights. Colorado's Cody Vanderwall led the field to the green flag and had a nice lead early in the going as the field ran single file in the opening laps. Once lap traffic played into the mix, business was beginning to pick up. Jagger Jones and the McAnally trio of Brittany Samora, Haley Deegan, and Derek Cross tried everything to catch Vanderwall, but instead had to use their bumpers to improve the precision, as seen here. These ladies aren't afraid to make contact. That comfortable lead Vanderwell had went bye-bye as Jones was setting blistering laps in Colorado. Several more laps later, Jones caught him and battled door-to-door -door with the pole sitter, but then everyone wanted part of that battle as they stayed like this for a few minutes. Fantastic stuff. And through all of that intense chaos, Vanderwall just kept leading by the slimmest of margins. Then finally, championship leader of Krauss said, it's my turn to take the lead, and indeed he did clearing Vanderwall. Krauss would hold on to that lead while Vanderwall regressed out of the top five as his woeful season appeared to have continued up to that point. The undisputed points leader in the NASCAR K&M Pro Series would hold off Samora ending it to lead at the halfway point when the caution came out. Vanderwall and Takuma Koga took advantage of the caution period to make some improvements but cannot change the tires whatsoever. The pole sitter wouldn't be a factor of this race until the absolute very end. On the restart, Krauss shows the top group while Zamora's restart technique looked better than in Tucson. Krauss would just hold on to that baby entering the backstretch, making room for Jones to make his move on the top. Zamora goes slow, making it three. Hold the phone four wide as Hello Negan squeezes her way to get by Zamora. Meanwhile, Krauss blocked Jones and held on to the lead. Then on lap number 89, the sweet spot of turn one proved to be favorable for Deegan yet again to get by Cross for the race lead and no doubt was having the race of her career, leading with ease as the drivers behind her were done drawing blood. Idaho's Travis Milburn, who was angry and flipping the bird at Todd Souza in Tucson, had a strong showing throughout the night, even battling with Cross for a top five spot. Trouble once again for Bobby Hillis Jr. this season in the number zero Tucson Speedway Camry machine spun in turn one. He would ultimately be one of two drivers who didn't finish the race due in most part of this incident. Where have we seen this before? It's Jones versus Deegan. Deegan versus Jones. Like almost all results, it's the Temecula native who got the nice jump on a restart and continued controlling the Napa Auto Parts Colorado 150. Look out, Ty Souza! Souza with an incredible save as he kept on trucking without any issues and it wouldn't be the last you'll hear from him. Another competition Cushion would come out, but before it did, the battle for four was the best action as Trevor Huddleston, a complete afterthought at this point, was trying to get by Samora and Krause, but it was too late as Deegan crossed the line for the caution, ending a nice little battle. On the penultimate restart, Kraus locked his bumper on Jones, ruining a run on catching Deegan. Jones would tuck back in line for second, while Kraus had to be in third. Deegan and Jones pulled away as Kraus had his eyes on not allowing Huddleston to get by. With no problems, that's the final result. Krauss and Zamora were having a nice battle for third until going into turn one on lap number 147. There was contact between the teammates, resulting the orange number 99 in Nails Toyota to spin, erasing Deegan's lead and forcing this race ahead into overtime. Zamora would get her car back rolling, but out of contention for the race win. Here's the situation. Deegan out of front. Jones is second. Cross in third as the field took the green flag with two laps to go. Cross with a tremendous restart goes down to the bottom. Pitches both the front row and will take the lead. Will a little fender contact? Could he be heading for his third straight win in a row? Deegan didn't appreciate that move as the field came down to the white flag. Cross was looking for three in a row and extend the points lead. Deegan needs a turnaround and coming down the back. 
Jones with a tap on Deegan. And then, oh no, that's a teammate. Contact results. Crowds the spin around. Deegan regains the lead. That went on to score her third career k and West win as Carnage ensues behind her. Huddleston runs into the back of Jones, changing the whole complexity of this championship trail. As Jones winds up seven, Huddleston at nine. With Deegan's win, she is now tied with Shauna Robinson for most NASCAR touring wins by a female driver, with Robinson winning all three of her victories back in 1988 and 89 in the Goodies Dash. Here's what Deegan had to say about that infamous final restart. I knew they were going to start taking swings on those restarts, and even my dad on the radio was like, you got the 16 behind you, you'll be fine, just worry about the 9, or the 6, whoever it was. <laughs> and all of a sudden he came flying in, I was expecting him to be a little cleaner, and he wasn't, so I had to swing back. And then we're here for wins, not here to finish second or third. So. Now, this is your first win with your crew chief, Kyle, your team right here, they're really excited. What does it mean to you to be able to bring a win to these guys that work so hard for you week in and week out? It means everything. We had a couple struggle races before this, but I knew our car setup was the best coming out here. We were tense faster than everybody, tense faster than everybody in the race. We were in our quickest lap on like 125. So we were solid, had an awesome night. I want to thank everyone for helping me get him here, Monster and Nampa, BMR for taking a chance on me, my crew chief, Kyle. Taking a pace from Chase Elliott's book, a disappointing cross felt like he would rather say nothing about the last lap and just simply move on to Sonoma. If your mama tells you not to say something bad about someone, don't say anything at all, and that's kind of the situation here. I mean, we were had a broken sway bar and just kind of fighting it through the night, and I saw a hole, so I, I took the hole like any other race car driver should, and took the hole and just, just got dumped on the last lap. I mean, it's, she's done it before, and I'm sure that ain't going to be the last time she does it. Meanwhile, Cody Vanderwall takes second and a tip of the cap to Todd Sousa, finishing third for his best finish since Orange Show in 2017. For Vanderwall, it's no doubt his best finish off the season and his best since his Tucson victories. It is no doubt an encouraging result that he's been needing this season. I was a little bit disappointed there for most of the race because um, we led like 35 laps or whatever and then just start, started getting super tight on me. and. Um, we came in at both the breaks. I think we were like the only ones that did and made some good adjustments and got it a lot better. We're still struggling to make any headway. I think we were running about seventh. And, and then we had that green-white checkered and the outside lane backed up like crazy. So I was like, all right, cool. We're in like fourth or fifth now. And then they all started wrecking down here in three and four. I was like, uh, where do I go? I saw daylight to the outside, put my foot to the floor. I think I burned rubber all the way, all the way past the start finish line, came out P2. So I was like, I was as shocked as everybody, I think, but, um, I'm glad to come away with a second um, after the struggles we had. Still a little bit disappointed I've wanted that win, but you know, it's still good in the end. Here are the final results of the Napa Auto Parts Colorado 150, a race that extended to 150 to 155 laps due to that overtime. Haley Deegan scored her third career k and West win, leading the most laps at 66, followed by Cody Vanderwall, who led 46 laps. Todd Zuzza won a season best in third. Brittany Samora recovered nicely to finish fourth, and rounding out the top five is Matt Levine. Give another tip of the hat to John Wood with his best finish, no doubt, all season, and that number 38 Idaho 208 car takes six. Jagger Jones ends up at seven. Derek Krause, the third and final driver to have led in this race, 43 of them to be exact, finishes eight. Trevor Huddleston winds up at ninth, and for the second straight race in a row, Takuma Koga gets a top 10 result. And in the bottom four, it's Ron Jay, Taylor Canfield, and the Joe Rogan experience guard. He stayed out of trouble all night long. Bobby Hillis Jr. in 13th and rounding out the field is Travis Milburn, who fell out of the race after completing 104 laps due to a rear end failure. The cautions were four for 22 laps. The margin of victory was 0.859 seconds with four lead changes among three drivers. The race lasted 59 minutes and 54 seconds. This is what we mean about a championship shake -up. Here is the championship standings heading into Sonoma, where no doubt we'll see more of that shuffle. Derek Krause's championship lead is now 12 over Haley D, who makes a tremendous jump. Jagger Jones is third in points. Trevor Huddleston drops to fourth, now 20 markers behind. Brittany Zamora not too far, sitting fifth, 26 markers behind. Matt Levine, 29 behind. Derek Krause, he's six in points. Todd Zusa, seventh. Cody Vanderwall, eighth. Travis Milburn in ninth, and Takuma Koga cracks the top 10 of the championship trail for the first time this season after Tanner Gray did not participate in this race. What a chaotic race in Colorado, and no doubt kicking off the month of June with an absolute bang. You never want to see teammate trouble. As I 
talked about in the previous episode about my initial thoughts of the whole Deegan Krauser deal. That's what you call payback. If you rub somebody the wrong way, they're being expected, expect to be paid back. And that was the case. But usually, I don't really condone teammate trouble. Look at Kevin Harvick and Jeff Green at Richmond. Jeff Green got fired. Dario Franchini and Paul Tracy, when they were at Cool Green, they they wreck more on an annual basis at least once a year. From like 98, 99, 2000, 2001, 2002, you usually typically would expect Frank Keating and Tracy to have contact. And who can forget in Formula One with Mercedes, both Mercedes taking themselves out on the opening lap, Rosberg and Hamilton at Catalonia. With who else? Not other than Max Verstappen winning the race. It's just how, it's just how it works. It's very unique, very bizarre. You don't want to see that. And the Canada West, it seems like they didn't mind it. Sure, Krauss was disappointed. Trevor Huddleston and Jagger Jones were disappointed of what happened. And I imagine Brittany Samora as well was disappointed. Krauss was involved in all of those instances where there was contact, melees, problems. And that result is what the, he doesn't need. Sure, he still has that comfortable championship lead going into Sonoma, which more than likely we don't expect a regular winning that race. We don't. And looked at the initial entry list. We don't. We still don't know if Will Rogers will run. We know who are going to run from the national side: Noah Gregson, Austin Dillon, Cole Custer, to name a few. Those guys are running at Sonoma, and with Custer driving the third Brunkati car, so you would expect those guys to be competitive and more than likely the guys to beat for sure. Though also to add, Ryan Priest is also going to give a crack out of that West. Race of Sonoma to gain experience. My question is, is Custer going to run a Rick Ware car like he did a year ago? We know Gregson is not is only going to run the k n West race because he's an Xfinity regular and there's no Xfinity race of note taking place at Sonoma. That is taking place, as I'm recording, is on Friday, June 14th, this weekend in Iowa for the Circus City 250. And yes, that does exist. Yes, Circus City still exists. It's just an online shopping store now. And yes, Shane Lee is driving the Circus City car. Talk about an absolute flashback and wondering, huh? Circus City still exists? Yes, it still does. It still does. Just like MySpace does exist, except all your back stories and history and all that crap from the 2000s or it's just no longer exist anymore it's mostly become a music entity now and if memory serves correctly i remember a close dear friend of mine los angeles intern or has some ties with myspace a couple years ago when it was a music entity and all that original stuff was still around okay enough bantering about circus city and myspace my point is the big question still is Will Rogers, and the question will be, will a regular win at Sonoma? I extremely doubt so. If Deegan wins, that will be huge for her championship bid. And uh, speaking of Deegan, this was no doubt her best race of her career. This was a race she controlled. When she took the lead, she pulled away. Nobody could get by her. That bottom group, yet again in another race track, was the preferred lane. Jagger Jones tried to make that top group work. He just got... Shut the door when Deegan, Samora, and Krause and himself went for wide on that restart after the first caution period. It's just, this is what she needed. This is what she needed, no doubt. No doubt. Sure, she had strong results in the first Tucson race. Sure, she bounced decently back on a recovery after spinning at Irwindale. But her luck since her Vegas win was just not that good. She just had the misfortune of luck whether it's in her control, out of her control, or within the crew members. Remember, she lost Kevin Wars Jr., her crew chief, the only crew, the crew chief that got two of her three wins. So they had to spice it up, and it took her long to get with a new with the new crew chief to win in the KN West Tour. So this was her this was his third race, third race without Kevin Wars Jr. So the chemistry is there, and the memory starts crying. I think this is her fourth crew chief in her career, fourth or fifth. The memory serves correct. So hopefully that pair with Kev, with Kyle works out well. It, I really hope because they got to put Kevin Ward Jr. behind after what happened at Bristol with the whole deal where he got pretty much let go from that squad. And just going forward. And she did really well. When I was at Sonoma covering that race for Motorsports Tribune, she had a really strong showing at the very end. She 
power that nap of machine number 19 when it was the white number 19 before it was a black number 19. She powered that thing for multiple laps. We thought that would be the end of her. We were just waiting for that moment to blow. It did not. She had an compelling battle with Eric Jones. Really compelling battle with Eric Jones. And ironically, the following day, Eric Jones was the, was the driver of that ride-along thing that they have in the morning is on Sunday, that Toyota thing. If memory serves correctly, I believe Daniel Hammer, speaking of Eric Jones, Daniel Hammerick is another one. So it's Austin Dillon, Noah Gregson, Cole Custer, Ryan Priest, and Daniel Hammerick, as I'm recording this, are going to be running the k and West race out of those who are on the National Tour Cup or Xfinity. But this is what she needed. This was definitely the, the trademark, the race that she needed. This was the race I will put as her best win. Sure, she used the bumper on the last lap, like all of her wins were. Sure, it was at the expense of his teammate Derek Krause. Albeit Derek Krause pinched Deegan. He pretty much did. But hey, that's just overtime racing. That's just short track racing too. There's You can, you can expect a payback regardless. So that's just how it is. Sure, it's unethical to take out your teammate. But she's on, she, she has no remorse. If it's a teammate or whoever, she does not care as long as she wins the race and puts the bumper. The only problem that I really have is people calling her the next intimidator. She's not Dale Earnhardt. She's not Earnhardt. There's only one Earnhardt, period. She's Haley Deegan. She's Haley Deegan, the first Haley Deegan. Not the next Danica some people already alluded to after what happened at Pocono, the Arca race. Sure, it's, fun, it's funny to say she's the new intimidator and all that, but I don't really buy the notion. She's a, she's a fierce, unafraid, competitive, and aggressive driver. Something we have never seen in a female driver Pretty much on a mainstream level. Other than maybe Shauna Robinson. Shauna Robinson, you look back at the 1994 Bush Grand National Race at Atlanta where she won the pole in that 46 Polaris car. The orange Polaris. She did not shy away her feelings about Mike Wallace, who might, by the way, had something. He pretty much made it clear. Even Joe Nemechek, or as Eli Gold used to say, Joe Nemechek, knew that Mike Wallace was going to do something to Shauna. And then he, he literally did. And took, uh, took her out, took Joe Nemechek out, and the rest is history. Shauna was extremely angry at Mike Wallace. Mike Wallace pretty much was all BS in that interview, the post-race, and all that. It's interesting how the Wallace brothers all work. Rusty Wallace was the... We're much the tweener, babyface, heel. Mike is pretty much from, from a lot of people from what I've heard... He's probably the least likable Wallace out of the three. Kenny is Kenny Wallace. What you, it's Kenny Wallace. He's pretty much the baby face, but not afraid to not afraid to confront anybody. That's proven that uh, with Ashton Lewis Jr. in 2004. So he, all three had that had that mean streak. But out of the but out of those three, Mike was probably the least like the least likable out of the three. Much like in the Bodine side, Chef was the least liked. For more than one reason, because of the Earnhardt thing from New York and that whole earring, infamous earring that he had. This is the 90s. Guys had earrings. Even back in the 80s with George Michael. Why am I talking about? The point is Haley Deegan is Haley Deegan. We have not seen somebody who is aggressive on the female side of the sport. Sure, Danica was another thing, but it's just, it's just she did not bode well. Transition well in NASCAR. She was not a good NASCAR driver. She wasn't. And to a degree, she was rushed. In the IndyCar, she was pretty competent. She was pretty good. Look, she, she uh, in her final race at the Indianapolis 500, she made it to the Fast 9. So her open wheel instant was still there. It's still pretty good. If, if, if she ran one more full season, I would not be terribly surprised if she cracks the top 10. Who knows? But... That's the thing about what Connor Daly said. It's so difficult to jump in an Indy car as a part-timer or a one-off or etc. Because you're competing with pretty much everybody on the grid. They're running the whole season. You have 20, 22 guys. And it can't, it, it's just Danica did pretty well in the end before she wrecked uh, per usual. But Haley Deegan's the first Haley Deegan. She's not Dale Earnhardt. She has some of that aggressive instincts, and that's what with the sport needs. That's what we need, and that's the thing that we hopefully, I hopefully do want to see a Brittany Samora show. Because Samora, she made it clear on Twitter that in the lane models, it's unacceptable to be doing that kind of stuff. And the k and West is pretty much anything goes, hold down. I'm talking about the Western tour, not the other way around. 
you're not af- unafraid. You're not afraid to be fierce and aggressive. And I firmly believe we're, we, we will see that. I'm pretty much thinking Sonoma could be the good race to do so. Because they're going to be using that bumper. They're going to be aggressive. We expect to be a stack field. We can expect 20 cars in Sonoma in the Carneros 200. If Samora did had a pretty not a bad race, but she's it's, um, somebody pointed this out, and I do agree. In the first couple, in the first five races, compared to Vegan's first five races a year ago, Samora has been more consistent. She's fifth in the championship trail right now. She's competed for, she's contested for wins already. It wasn't really for Deegan until Roseburg when she started to pick up her momentum, battling for wins. Samora is already battling for wins. Sure. As one as one motorsports writer alluded to, and many others on the world social media and groups on Facebook, Twitter, etc., the West and the East, to a degree, it just has two teams that are going to be the front runners always, unless problems ensue. And in other words, it's their four letter word that starts with a W. Sure, the sure the field, the amount of cars and competitive cars is not the strongest per se. But as long as it produces high quality racing and memorable stuff to talk about, you can you can eliminate that concern. Whereas in ARCA, the field and group and everything is weak. Period. Weak. There's that's the four letter word. Weak. When it's really good racing or compelling and intense racing, you can for, you don't remember you you forget about that stuff. That's what the that's what the Canada West has been this season. Even in Indy Lights, as long as the quality of competition is phenomenal, the weak the word weak. Is erased. You don't think about it. Whereas in Arca, you do. It is loud and noticeable. Very loud and noticeable. It is by 2020 comes along. It's gonna be very intense and compelling to know how strong these rosters and groups and teams are gonna be when you have Arca and both Can and Pro Series running pretty much together with the stock car invitational and all that stuff. So 2020 is gonna be very fun and interesting, no doubt. But I'm telling you. It's on the West Coast. It's just the beginning. It is literally just the beginning. Sure, there may be five guys, and who knows? Matt Levine could be in this mix. Matt Levine is not terribly behind. He's twenty nine markers out of the top, out of the championship lead. All of these guys have problems to know them. While Levine does fine, Levine could be the Takuma Sato of the KN West. And what I mean by Takuma Sato, Takuma Sato is fifth in the IndyCar standings. He could. He could still be in that championship. He could be in that championship mix. Just need to pull some more strong results and maybe get a win or two to really knock on the door of being the true wild card of that IndyCar title chase. Levine is, could be that guy. Or even Samora. Matt Levine has been quietly, quietly in the background that takes advantage of those drivers' misfortunes when necessary. He stayed out of trouble. He stayed out of trouble all season long. He has, compared to Todd Souza. Because you have McAnally, Sunrise, top tier. Then you have that interesting battle with Levine Racing and Todd Souza squad. And then you have your Tanner Gray. You have your Jefferson Pitt cars that on occasion to run on the, on the West Coast. It's just, it's this it, wow. This is the wild. It's just wild. It's just wild, period. Speaking of Todd Souza. This is a tremendous run. Other than his one win in the k and West, his best result, he has two third place. He's never finished a runner-up. He has one win. So this was a tremendous run. He stayed out of trouble. I don't know how in the world he saved. He saved that thing in turn number one, which has been the central theme of all season. Turn number one is Calamity Corner. No matter which circuit we're running, that's been the case all year long. What a save by Todd Suso. What a save. Phenomenal save. That was no doubt... A tremendous race, and when I when I was in Texas and found out that Todd Souza got thrown, I was um, I was Godsmack. I was wondering what happened to those Fabricati cars, and I found out oh the oh Trevor Huddleston locked up the brakes, turned Jagger Jones. Obviously not on purpose. He was just trying to gain as many tracks as because you know if you put your foot in it in a corner, it may be difficult. If you put your foot in it, and Deegan loses enough momentum from that contact with Kraus, you would be seeing Trevor Huddleston winning. So I understand his viewpoint. He locked the brakes. Just Jagger Jones was just a roadblock and just got turned. Simple as that. Another frustrating result for the rookie. 
third generation racer. It's just those are the kind of things that you have to be careful. Huddleston could be in that title mix too, but he was the pretty much the biggest loser out of that chance out of the points table. He is. He came in second in points. Now he's fourth. Deegan now back to second. Jones is still in third while Krause has a 12-point advantage. Anything can happen at Sonoma. And, we're, and I already alluded to this, and I'll mention it more on the preview that you'll be seeing soon after this video, matter of hours, whenever I want to whenever I want to upload this. Because I know this you're listening to this on Wednesday. I'm recording this on Friday, June 14th. And I'll do the preview recording probably on a Tuesday before I, the Tuesday, you know, you know the shtick, but high said is, it's going to be a wild card race. Sonoma is the wild card race of the season. Not the combo races, but Sonoma. Because the combo races is anything goes, really. Sonoma, you just, it's just a matter of who gets the best finish out of those regulars fighting for the title. That could come out of there smelling like roses and drinking some of that wine. Well, preferably for probably some of them. Who are older, over 21, they get to try the wine of Victory Lane. And those who are under 21, they'll have, I don't know, sparkling water or whatever, that kind of stuff. But that's enough about Sonoma. Travis Milburn, I mentioned, you've, you heard he was having a strong run going, but then I had to look back at the table when I did this and I realized, wow, Mil Milburn actually did have problems before Bobby Hillis brought up the caution. It's just a tough shame for Travis Milburn in that car. He was having another strong run. He had, he can show he has strong run. Look at the KN East race at South Boston, the first one. He was the best of the regulars in the West. Consistently the best car in that race. I'll beat Krause. I'll beat Deegan by a country mile. I'll, no doubt he beat Ron Jay. But... That's what, he was having a nice run going and he had a rear end problem that knocked him out. He's your last car winner at Colorado 14th. And John Wood, John Wood, 6th place. Best run he's had all year. That's, he, he caught a lucky break. Not only that, he stayed on the lead lap. He stayed on the lead lap. I think there were only 9 cars on the lead lap with Takuma Koga, the, only, the first one, multiple laps down, but... So not only stayed on the lead lap, finished the race, got a top 10, 6. Great run. Great run for him. Great run for that team. They could use that strong result. And with that being said, the moral story is, I seen Stegen didn't do anything wrong. Krause didn't do anything wrong. There was a reason behind what Deegan did. Of course, he said, had both of them, had, uh, had it happened the other way, as far as the outcome is concerned, where Deegan turned in the crowds, but both of them spin Ricky Rudd, Dale Earnhardt, North Wilkesboro 89 style, Deegan would re then, then we were talking a whole different story. It's a completely different story. Because that would because if that was the other, if it was like what happened in 89 in Wilkesboro, you'd be talking about Cody Vanderwall winning. You'd be talking about Deegan's championship aspirations pretty much dead in the water at this point in the season. We're not even halfway. And of course, then people will say, why she did it? Why she did it? What did it got her nowhere? You've been having complete different talk. Complete different talk. But Krauss did what, she, what he did. Deegan did what he did. And that's just, that's just part of short track racing. They even up the playing field. Short the expense was that Krauss and Deegan got the beneficiary. It's just how it is. And she did point it. She did mention it. Had that had the had it been both themselves taking us both out of the running, there might have been some regret on that move, no doubt. But man, teammate drama, team drama, all of that race. Bob Brugatti, Bill McAnally, so no one's going to be very interesting. And with that being said, that will do it with this review. I apologize that it took longer, but hey. When I when I have to when I cover races, it comes at the expense, and I put those races that I cover as huge priority. And I had a blast covering the truck race at Texas. I had a tremendous blast covering the Indy car race down there as well. That's just my bread. That's just my priority. And I did mention in, in advance that it will come later, and I know Sonoma will come later as well. The problem we'll see how that goes. I may not. That may be a special edition where it may not be on a Wednesday because the following race after Sonoma is Roseburg. That's one of the very rare races where they're back-to-back. -back. 
consecutive weeks. It's going to be very hairy, but hopefully down in July and the summer stretching into the tail end of the season, it mellows down as far as the as far as complicating things with this series. So, so no more preview will be coming up not that long after this video goes up on Wednesday that you're listening to right now. So until we meet again, thank you for listening for this compelling, intense, and dramatic Napa Auto Parts Colorado 150 review. Sonoma, next round. Deegan, with momentum that she needs, what will happen with her? What will happen with Cross? All of that and more on that preview and the race that follows. In the meantime, catch you guys later.